<laughs> All right. Hey, folks, Nathan here. That is Nathan P. Butler. This is my YouTube channel. Predominantly on this channel, you will find Star Wars content most of the time. But because of Battlefront, having that uh, PlayStation VR experience coming with the Rogue One X-Wing VR mission, and because I am on a podcast, Cloud City Casino, dedicated to gaming, specifically leaning towards Star Wars, of course, over at StarWarsReport.com, I'm doing some quick playthroughs of some of the first minutes and whatnot of quite a few of the PlayStation VR games. We've done six at this point, this is number seven, so we've done Batman Arkham VR, we've done PSVR Worlds, uh, we've done Until Dawn Rush of Blood, we've done Eve Valkyrie, Eve Gunjack, and a tiny bit of Riggs. Now this is something very, very different. This is Wayward Sky. We're picking up here with two PlayStation Move controllers. One of the few games that actually do allow for the two. I was actually kind of surprised at the limited number that actually do. I mean, there's more than you would expect percentage-wise of just than just standard uh, PS3 games back in the move era. But certainly right now, when it comes to uh, PlayStation VR, you see more of these. Oh, uh, they're near behind us. Hold it steady, a look-and-click VR adventure. What they mean is basically it is a uh, point-and-click kind of adventure game. It'll switch between third-person and first-person depending on uh, whether we're solving a puzzle or trying to move around. And we're using our move controller here. There's two of them, but this one in particular is acting as sort of our beacon to choose things, pointing and clicking with the trigger button underneath. So pointing at this, clicking the trigger. Are you okay? You want some? Come on. Oh. Ah. No. Best go. Run. Oh. Ah. Oh. I'll find you. No. Now this part, at least, this is available. This chunk of it is actually on the demo disc. Um, the game I'm playing is the full $20 version of it from a PSN, but this initial chunk of the game, this is what you play on the demo disc. So if I point and click, that's how I move her location. If I point to an item that is essentially part of either a puzzle or an interactive piece, it'll jump to first person, and I'll need to grab whatever it is and activate it, and then once I've done that, I hit this little button to move me back out, and now I'm into this part again. Okay. Um, huh, I don't think I ever looked at that before. Let's go ahead and hit this. Okay, so, oh look, a puzzle. So it's kind of a standard... Oh, what am I doing? There we go. That's the, this one I need. Okay, so rotating here uh, with my wrist. They're not, at least to begin with, they're not particularly inventive puzzles. But it's just, it's really kind of showing the potential of these types of games on PSVR because the world really feels like it's just spread out in front of you, almost like you're playing this on a giant set of tables where you set up these maps for yourself, like a miniatures game or something, um, with the unique aspect that you do wind up jumping into the cockpit as required. Oh, there goes the rest of my ability to grab anything. And it releases these little dudes. I never did look at this. I'm curious what this does. Oh! Okay, what is that? Oh, it's a collectible, I suppose. Or something. Okay. You just gotta avoid these dudes that look like they're out of a kid's toy box. They only see you if you look directly at them, though. Or if they look directly at you. Doop -doo -doo. Bye! 
Oops. I'm assuming that I'm supposed to be trying to get this guy to... Drop. Please run off of this thing. There we go. Ah, until she actually goes down the... The, whatchamacallit, down the ladder, I can't click for that area. Cool, I get it. I'm assuming this will let me throw him off or something. Or maybe not, maybe I just send him off to the other side. I need to move him because I won't be able to get over there without him. Well, that, well, okay, I can trap him over there, I suppose, is what's happening. There we go. So I guess he won't step on this. It'll collapse under him, perhaps. More buttons! This piece actually is not what's connected on the uh, the demo, so it's just that first little area, and then once you get past that thing where I move the big old box, right before I grab that collectible, as soon as you pass through that door, it moves into a different area that's not on the demo. Okay, so let's see. Two at a time. That should be just these two. Yep. Yeah, not the most uh, deep of puzzles. But I usually don't like these kinds of games. I usually think they're kind of basic. Um, I'm not, I don't tend to game much on PC at this point. So anything like this as a point-and-click adventure is something I really haven't messed with in a very long time. But again, the fact that... I mean, you can't really see it here. But like for me... It feels as though she is about a foot and a half, two feet in front of me, uh, just within arm's length. Like, if I stretch my arm all the way out, then I'm passing right in front of her here. And then this arch is basically right beside me as if it's like the, the wall of a room. And this thing is stretching out um, pretty far. I mean, we're talking about, about the width or length of at least a room, if not more. And, of course, you got the fact that you feel like you're standing on a pipe... As you're looking down, 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 and granted there's not detail down there. Um, but you do get the sense that you are up high relative to what's down there. Um, so it takes a game that would normally be, um, I would argue, like I said, pretty basic in terms of um, the way that it feels as you play, and gives you this new dynamic here that really turns it into something a bit different. Not sure what that is, but let's see what it is. Okay. What am I doing? Well, come on. I have no clue what this is wanting me to do. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't have the foggiest freaking clue what this is wanting me to do.
can't really take it off at this point. Eh, that's one I'll have to come back to at some point. Okay. Let's see what this one moves for me. I mean, she can't, like, smack it from a distance. What the shit? Whoa. Interesting. Click the button. Click the thumb button. Where that gold piece is. With the four little pieces on there in the front. Alright, so that didn't help me at all. There's got to be something I've got to do with this then, right? There's nothing I can... I mean, I can't take these off. There's nothing I can do with anything down here. These just yank... I can't apparently grab just the little centerpiece here. Can't grab that. Like I said, these do not come off now. So I haven't the foggiest idea unless I can reset the area by going back that way. Because you can't jump. God forbid you can make normal human actions like jumping. Alright. Let's go back. Alright. And that still shows them attached on the top. So I walk this way. Walking this way does me no good. Walking that way does me no good. And I can't drop down. I can't even select down there. So I've got to press the button. But I can't get onto one fast enough. So I guess I meant to go... Okay, yeah, I meant to go this way. I didn't see that one because it was like r literally right under my nose. Ah, okay, yep. Assuming there's nothing around that way to look at. Let's see. Thankfully, the AI is kind of like on a lot of um, uh, point-and-click adventure games and mobile games where basically if you click somewhere, the character will generally take the best path to get there without screwing up. I said, I kind of want to see, is there something back there, like a collectible or anything. Oh, there's a little wind chime looking thing again. I wonder if these are related to collectibles, perhaps. Okay, yeah, maybe there's not a specific order they need to be in on there. Maybe I just missed one early on and you're supposed to just do all five to perhaps get a collectible or something. Sure, why not? I'm going to take this up to the next piece and then jump out of this because we do have five other games to eventually take a look at here. Oh, I've got to kind of raise my hand up and aim down. All right, take us up. Interesting. 
again, this looks like it's spread out in front of you. It looks like some, some kid took boxes and built them up into this shape as my cats are fighting behind me. Um, and that will actually like be laid out across the floor as if I'm sitting, as I said, probably about three feet, give or take, away from them. Um, and this is sitting on the floor, piled up to a height just a little bit above where my head is, given the fact that I'm sitting. Okay, don't know what that is. Let's find out. What is that? Oh, okay, it isn't anything. I was thinking that was something I was supposed to grab. Okay. Whoa. Oh, no, that's the way I came up. Okay. Back up the ladder. Alright, well, that didn't work. So I guess she needs to get over to that. And I guess do that. Which will let her go to that. And go across the front, I suppose. There you go. Yeah, she can't jump down. I may have to kill some cats before doing the next demo here. And in the door. All right, and we're back to the little robot things. So, again, as you can see, it's a very kind of a straightforward, for the most part, point and click. Uh, more about just sort of, well, what does this do rather than like full-blown, like difficult puzzles with calculations and stuff like that or anything like that to do. Um, but a very cool atmosphere in which you're doing this, and because it is a game that for the most part is in a fixed point of view for you, looking out at the environment, and is only going into first person for those puzzles, uh, and in first person you're looking around but you're at a stationary point, kind of like sort of standing there as Batman in Batman Arkham VR. Um, no experience of simulation or motion sickness for me in this particular game at all. It's not going to be for everybody, but it's a little bit different. It's a different kind of experience than what we get with a lot of the um, PSVR games. In fact, really any of the other PSVR games at this point. And if you're trying to pick it up on PSN, it is 20 bucks rather than a full 40 50 or 60 depending on uh, what you think of as full for PSVR at this point. So um, definitely want to check out if you're into this type of game, though it is, again, it is not going to necessarily be for everybody. Main menu, please. S'il vous plaît. And there we level select to be able to go wherever. And our cool little setup here that lets you sit down at the little controls. Right, the wind chimes, there, and so on and so on. And these weird, like, VR headset or sunglasses wearing friggin' chickens running around. They show up in the dim, I've never quite figured out what they're for. Um, but yeah, so that is Wayward Sky. Next up, we're going to take a look at the Brookhaven Experiment, which is a monster-based, sort of first-person shootery experience, uh, similar in the vein to Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, um, but from what I'm hearing with crafting options and a little bit uh, less travel uh, involved in it, we shall see. So we'll be back momentarily with the Brookhaven Experiment. <laughs> 